Live from the local station, this is Weather Authority Weekday. I'm meteorologist Katie Garner and welcome to Weather Authority Weekday. I'm happy to be with you. We're going to get right into it. I want to talk to you about the tropics. I know that's what's on everyone's mind. So Tropical Storm Erin continues its westward progression across the tropical Atlantic. It maintains sustained winds near 45 miles an hour and the system is traversing an environment highly conducive to intensification characterized by those warm sea surface temperatures in the 80s, which are a little warmer than normal, abundant mid-level moisture, and minimal vertical wind shear. So the wind shear is very low. Consequently, the National Hurricane Center projects that Aaron will attain hurricane strength within the next 42, 48 to 72 hours, excuse me, with the potential to reach major hurricane status by this weekend. Current consensus among global forecast models favors a track that keeps the storm's core north of the northern Leeward Islands, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Nevertheless, these regions remain under threat of significant impacts, including heavy precipitation, long period swells, and hazardous surf conditions. We're in for some rip currents as well, anyway this tropical pattern goes. Beyond the stage, ensemble guidance diverges with some scenarios maintaining a recurvature well east of the United States coastline, while others bring the system in the closer proximity to the western Atlantic corridor between Bermuda and the eastern seaboard. At this juncture, it remains premature to assign high confidence to any specific U.S. impact scenario, underscoring the need for continued monitoring and prudent preparedness. So I want to take you into the forecast now. We're going to kind of show you what's going on. This is a look at the tropical satellite. And, you know, I took some notes here because I think it's really imperative to tell you about this. You can see Aaron on the tropical satellite. You notice the tight swirl of cloud bands wrapping into the center. That dense cluster of bright white clouds is called the central dense uh, forecast. And that's where the heaviest rain and strongest winds are, are really going to be concentrated. And here, it's a little more red on the map. Uh, you know, I had the I had the uh, satellite with the white imagery in it, but I thought that this one kind of portrayed a better view of where Aaron is right now. Uh, you can also make out those outer feeder bands spiraling well away from the center, pulling in tropical moisture. And that means that the storm moving westward around the southern edge of the subtropical ridge means that you can see how the high-level outflow is starting to fan out on all sides. And that's a classic sign of a strengthening tropical system. I don't know if you knew that, but that's what it means. So as we continue to look at your forecast here, here's the tropical models. And right now, each line represents a different model. Uh, and they're all fairly in agreement of the turn. And as they do turn, you know, what you're going to notice is could stay to the east of our coastline. Still well too early to tell, but I'm looking at Bermuda and, of course, our coastline too. And, you know, one thing we're going to get either way are those rip currents. So uh, as far as the steering pattern, as we look at this, you can see Aaron is riding along the southern edge of a strong subtropical ridge, which is why it's tracking west. And over the weekend, a trough is forecast to dig into the western Atlantic, and that could carve out a weakness in that ridge. And if that weakness develops, it's imperative to know that uh, Aaron may start turning north in open water if it develops enough to do so. If the ridge stays firm, it could nudge Aaron further west before it even makes that turn. That's why the exact long train, long range track is still uncertain. And while we'll be watching these steering patterns very closely over the next couple of days, it's really important to do that. Continuing to look here at that steering pattern just to give you the full full view. Let's take a look at the wind swath because the wind swath forecast for tropical Aaron is basically this map showing where tropical storm force and hurricane force winds are going to be most likely. So as we look here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of show you on a wide scale here. Let's see how far this thing goes out. And just to give you an idea of where these winds are going to be, the orange and the red zones indicate the potential for hurricane force gust over 74 miles an hour. And you can see how that swath lines up with the forecast track but it also extends well outside the center. And that's a reminder that the impact from air and especially wind and larger waves can be felt far from the eye itself, even if you're not in the direct path. So I think this wind swath uh, forecast gives you a great indicator of what's going to happen here. And here's a look now at uh, the wave forecast. You know, wave heights are going to vary uh, certainly as we get through this. So that was a look at tropics. And I do want to make a mention that we do have a heat advisory today for our local area. Everybody in orange and from 11 to 7 o'clock. We're going to be very hot out there. You could see 95 degrees by about three o'clock and that's when some of those pop-up showers and storms have a chance to kick in in that high heat of the day just after the lunch hour from about one to two o'clock no noon to two o'clock and then the three o'clock hour they continue through the afternoon and evening highs today 95 in jacksonville mid to uh, excuse me, low to mid 90s on the coast. And uh, these are a look at the seven day forecast. We've got 90s in the forecast and uh, rain chances each and every afternoon. Thanks for joining us for weather authority weekday. See you tomorrow. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.